Join us on our website at www.thegrandview.org and get more information about our show. There you can download our free book, Everything You Need to Know About Outdoor Painting. I give out a newsletter almost every week. I try to do it every week, but it's called Campfire Chats, and it comes to you, I mean, the email. <laughs> it's separate. I never did it. Well, you never signed up for it. You have to go to my website. And under my website, it says free book. When you sign up for the free book, then you automatically get my Campfire Chats. What I'm doing with my Campfire Chats is that I'm talking about things that are outside of this conversation, but I'm going to bring one of our campfire chats into this conversation. So if you don't get my campfire chats, go to my website, stephanbauman.com or thegrandview.org. And on the far right-hand corner in the menu, it says free book, sign up. Where you sign up, you'll get a book that you can download that's for free. But that's just the beginning, because now you're going to be getting things from me about things. And this week's our conversation was on edges. And I had so many people say, oh my God, I, I like that, but I wanted to understand more about it. I don't quite get edges. So painting edges is, is in my top. When, I, when you do my workshop up in Mount Shasta, I give out a list of 12 things that are important to become an artist. And somewhere near the top is painting edges. Now, when you talk about putting paint on the canvas, you're usually thinking about color, tone, value, edges is one of the things that you have to think about on um, temperature and brush stroke. Those are all things that you have to think about every time you lay a brush stroke down. What's really key is to have hard and soft edges, or some artists will say found and lost edges. It sounds much more mysterious to lose your edges. To find edges. That must be exciting when you find edges. So you have hard edges, you have soft edges. But what edges do you soften and what edges are hard? When you are looking at something, especially when you're looking at a painting or even when you're looking at a portrait, your main focus is on that thing. We call that a focal point. And usually it's somewhere in the painting. That area in that painting is the one area that you want the viewer to actually focus in. Now, as I'm getting older, my eyesight is kind of dimming a little bit, getting a little bit blurry. But in the process of that, I'm actually understanding because I had such awesome eyesight for so many years. And I'm also realizing how people, have, how people see, you know, how, they, how you focus in on things that you want to see and, and uh, other things you just kind of let go and say, oh, it's not worth putting my glasses on and stuff. So, you, you know, <laughs> or you have bifocal lenses and you're kind of like doing this all day. But the thing is, you know, as, we, as we lose our, our sight, we focus on things that are really important to everything else we don't. It's the same thing even when we have good vision, we just don't know it. But when you're actually looking at a face, you can only see one eye or the other. And if you don't believe that, then if you talk to somebody with a lazy eye and you're sitting there going, which one do I look at? <laughs> yeah, you have to kind of focus in on one of those. So wherever the central focal point is, that's the area that you actually have sharp. In fact, that's how you actually tell the viewer, this spot here is my central focal point. One of my phone coach students this morning had this same issue. She wanted the focal point to be on the donut, and yet it was still on the cup. And she goes, how do I do that like that? I say, well, on your donut, your, your edges are soft. Because you know when you put light on a chocolate, it just, it's the sugar or something, but it just kind of flows off. You don't get that sharp. And on the cup, right against the shadow, it got hard. And I said, well, where's your central focal point? She says, I want it to be on the donut. And I said, you can't, because that highlight there is not ever going to be that bright. And a lot had to do with, the, with her readjusting her light, so that worked for her. So a lot of times, it becomes a problem when you set it up, and that was her problem a bit. But I said, now what you have is that you, everybody's looking at that cup. 
And she said, well, how would you get that off of there and back on the donut? I said, you soften that edge. So where the cup hit the background, it was a dark color against a light color. And where those two met, that strong contrast in there, that one line there came really, really sharp. And that edge right in there, if you don't want the viewer to see that, you start softening that edge. Very simple. So Dottie today was working on two boats. They just kind of look like two still boats sitting in the water. I said, where's your central focal point? And she pointed to the front of the boat off to the, uh, towards the top. And she goes, oh, I don't know if that's a good idea there because it's, high, you know, it's up high and not quite in the center. And I go, well, it's actually in the middle third and just about where you want it, but it is awkward to have it up there, but it's a good, it's a good challenge, right? I said, well, you've got to get the viewer up there somehow. And in order to do that, we have to eliminate all these edges over here. So I, what did that feel like when we got rid of all the edges? And in the process of, of softening those edges, you've got some cool things happening too. And we ended up putting on that little dot off the oar and that little thing, it just almost looked like the oar was moving. And so all of a sudden you create movement. Now if you have a line or an edge, you can actually control the viewer. If you're really good at your edges, you can control the viewer how fast or how slow you want them to look at your painting. And so if you have a lot of hard edges in a painting, the viewer doesn't have to think a lot. It's totally illustrated. And so they look at it and in a blink of an eye, they've seen it all. If you soften the edges, the viewer has to slow down. They wander more. A lot of times what happens, those, those edges are eliminated and people start looking at the flow of color and value and temperature and how those, so all of a sudden the painting becomes a little bit more organic in that way. If you have a hard line and you start off with that hard line hard and you go softer, 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 you can actually have a viewer slow down while you're moving them around the painting. So if you have an eye magnet and you have a nice steady hard edge slowly working into a soft edge, the viewer kind of melts into a painting. But if you go from a hard edge really quickly to a soft edge, there's the experience of almost speed. And so you end up actually pushing the, the viewer quickly into the painting. And so how you blend a line that quality of line can actually determine how fast and how slow. So all of a sudden it starts becoming more complicated. And then if you want things to come out at you and recede, how you work those lines are also important too. It's not just taking a big brush and, and brushing out your lines. It's imagining the object coming up at you and the sharper lines up in front and as the object recedes, the lines get softer. In a face, you're better off having this area of the face sharper and the background softer. And even like when we go up against the, the, the hair and everything back there, you want to go softer, softer, softer. But keep in mind that central focal point, if you're working on, on a face, is still the hardest thing. So if you're softening up your edges to get more 3D, like a hand coming at you or something, you want to make sure that you're still keeping the hardest edges on your central focal point, which would be the eye in a portrait. But if you have a hand that's coming at you like this, you don't want this in focus. So it's the same thing like a camera does. So they call that a depth of field. But as an artist, that's really crucial. And to understand how edges work is really crucial. And so a lot of times when you hear people taking, oh, you know, you got to have hard and soft edges, you wonder, what does that mean? How do I control that? A lot of times it's, it's really thinking about where your central focal point is and usually that's determined by your light source. Usually the brighter light in that area will have harder edges. And then everything else determining on speed and whether or not you can get an object look 3D. Edges are just another level. I mean, I have 12 things. Horizon, edges, color, all this stuff is all part of Edges is just one of them. But it is one of the key points to be thinking about. And if you want to improve your paintings, concentrate on your edges. Um, but usually your softer edges are in the background, obviously, because it's, it's further back. And when you see something in front, if you look at eyes, you don't see the background that much. So a lot of times that's softened. But in Dottie's, it's like everything's almost on one plane. So you need to kind of 
get the hardness and softness on, on that plane. So. Expanded instructional DVDs that feature an hour-long demonstration of today's painting and other paintings in the series are available at the Grandview by calling 1-800-511-1337. Join us on our website, thegrandview.org, and get more information about our show. There you can download our free book, Everything You Need to Know About Outdoor Painting, along with a free diagram of today's subject. It's funded in part by... PaintingFromNature.com a website for artists seeking inspiration, advice, and knowledge to master painting from nature. Paintingfromnature.com, 